Uh, and I know one thing that, that we've talked with nearly every client that we work with about, Bob, is the importance of a growth plan. Everyone wants to grow, uh, but uh, often they don't have the plan in place for exactly what that growth is going to look like. Right. Everybody wants to say, hey, we're going to grow 10 percent this year. Great. What does that mean? Uh, so our, our good buddy, Bob Camp, that we work with uh, is really good at putting down specific growth plans. What are we going to sell? What are we going to sell more of? What should we sell more of? Who's our clients? Who's our target? How do we differentiate ourselves in the market? Uh, all those things go into a good, solid growth plan. Uh, and if we haven't thought about those 25 areas, key areas that we need to to develop a growth plan, we're not going to get there. You know, maybe we get there one year out of 10 through luck, but the other nine we have to deal with. So having a specific plan is key. Um, and how are we going to get there? What are the tactics? You know, time is limiting. We only have so many salespeople. We only have so much production capacity. So how do we put our best foot forward every day? How do we make our time count that we're going to the right clients with the right product or service at the right pricing and terms? All that goes into the growth plan uh, because we can't we can't waste time on low percentage opportunities. We have to pick what our high percentage opportunities are and go concentrate on those. It's it's more of a rifle approach than a shotgun approach. We have to have focused effort on the things that are going to be key to growth. Well, you know, speaking of growth, the other side we've seen of that uh, is acquisition opportunities. And of course, yeah. that's, that's going to be a big thing uh, in, in the coming months and the next couple of years with everything that, that's happened uh, with COVID. And we've actually had a couple of clients that have been able to strategically make a, a purchase, an acquisition, uh, but then generate immediate positive cash flow from that company that they acquired. Yes. So, so many companies that have struggled and we're seeing the extremes. It seems nobody's in the middle. E either people are doing really well at this time or they're not doing well at all. Uh, so there are opportunities uh, out there. And sometimes a stronger company can pick up a weaker company that has a good core business, good customers and good management and processes and help fund that company uh, sort of back on its feet. Uh, and able to produce very positive results in a short period of time. Some good companies have just run out of cash and uh, they need an infusion to get back on their feet. And often that's not a significant infusion. That's just enough to bridge for a few weeks sure. because they have a good backlog. They have good customers. They know what they're doing. They're a leader in their field. Those are all things that acquiring companies are after. Let's talk about AP, uh, accounts payable. And uh, boy, the importance of uh, what we pay and when we pay it. I, I don't know if there's anything uh, on these cash flow bullets that can be as important as your AP practices when it comes to cash flow, Bob. Well, that's right. And we've seen companies manage this incorrectly both ways. Some are postponing vendors way beyond when they should. Others are paying very too quickly. So again, we talk about optimization. Ideally, we want our accounts receivable to be at the same drum beat or the same heartbeat as our accounts payable. That money coming into the companies coming in at the same pace as money's going out. And that can vary by industry, depending on the vendors and the, and the customers. Uh, but don't be afraid to negotiate with suppliers. Uh, we generally try to pay most companies in the 38 to 45 day range. That's where they all seem to be uh, tolerantly comfortable. Um, mm -hmm. and, and I always tell clients and I've had to go in and manage their accounts payable before I say, always tell the truth. We're in trouble. We don't have the cash flow right now. Call those vendors, explain it to them, explain what our plan is, how we're going to recover, when we're going to pay you and then pay them when you say you're going to pay them. You can't afford to lose credibility. So you have to do what you say you're going to do. Uh, and that's been a process that we've put in place for years and it's worked very, very well but important to keep accounts payable and accounts receivable on the same pace. Uh, when those get out of balance, it affects our networking capital and, and spoils our cash flow. Well, you know, that's why we've got them listed as kind of the bookends here on our, our cash flow bullets. I mean, when you've got your AR and your AP in sync, uh, it makes everything else a lot smoother in between. That's right. Um, and, and vendors, 
want to work with you because they want to maintain you as a customer. You know, it needs to be a profitable relationship for both. That that's that's what keeps keeps the economy going. And we don't want to mistreat vendors. We just want to keep them in balance with our customers. Sometimes we have to go negotiate with customers. Sometimes we have to go negotiate with vendors. But keeping them in balance um, is really the key. Well, this wraps up our cash flow bullet series. We hope you found some of this information uh, helpful and maybe just, you know, even a couple of bullets that you think, oh, I can go back and apply that uh, tomorrow directly into my business and in, in our uh, operations. Any questions, you can find all our contact info either here on LinkedIn or at www.robertlweb.com. Thanks, Bob.